In this week's episode of Game of Thrones, A Man Becomes a Sir, Maisie Williams has nice boobs, and the shit is about to hit the fan. What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackwitz, this is The Cage Review, and this is going to be a review for Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 2. And with only 6 episodes, you knew that this had to be getting into something cataclysmic, and sure enough it does. Now I don't have my notes with me, I just watched it, uh, I'm going to jot down some thoughts and try to organize for an actual review. This is just my initial thoughts after watching the show, and of course this is going to have spoilers, so if you don't want to know... Now's not a good time to be watching if you haven't seen episode two. So you, the main things here are instantly, right off the bat, you have Jamie in front of Daenerys. And of course, the Starks are pissed off at him. Targaryens have right to be pissed off at him. And uh, it all comes down to Brienne standing up for him in the throne room, vouching for him, explaining all the stuff that he's done to ensure that the Stark girls survive, including Sansa, and of course Sansa trusts Brienne, and John says that they need the extra hand. So, so they give Jamie a pass because they know they've got a big war coming. Uh, we have that. We have the blossoming relationship between Arya and Gendry going full tilt. Uh, they have. The army of the dead on the march. Everybody's kind of dealing with this last night before this major war in different ways. You have a group of people, Brienne, Jaime, Tyrion, Davos, uh, Tormund. They're all in a room and they're drinking and, uh, you know, just kind of tell, telling stories. And, um, you know, just kind of being ready for this massive war. While Arya has never been with a man before wants the experience. So she goes to Gen Gendry and uh, is pretty forceful with him and um, it, it makes for a cool moment, honestly. Um, and it's something that I saw coming because of last episode. You know, they give them knowing looks and that's usually a good setup for something. And um, it was funny because my girlfriend and her mom, I'm watching with both of them and um, they were both shocked and I'm like, come on, man, I saw this coming. I knew that it was either going to be this episode or next episode, you're going to have this major battle. And they basically made this episode walk right up to the beginning of that battle. You've got the Knight Army, they're right next to Winterfell, everything's going crazy. So, it was pretty cool. Another big moment here was Brienne. Uh, of course, she's kind of fought with this thing about being a female, wanting to be a knight. Um, you know, even as far back as wanting to serve uh, for Renly Baratheon. And Jamie explains that knights are the ones who knight people, and uh, so he decides to make a presentation right there in front of everybody in their group and actually knights Brienne right there. And so you can see Brienne, who's obviously got feelings for Jamie, he uh, is showing not only that he has confidence in her, but kind of gives her what she's always wanted, and that's uh, the role of a knight. And so he says, rise as a knight of the seven kingdoms after the little ceremonial bit. And it was, it was a very cool moment, man. You could see the emotion in her face. I think, uh, I think it was very, very well acted. And of course it's going to be. You, I mean, the acting in this show has been amazing throughout, uh, but it really hit home. So, uh, the last really big thing that you kind of get before the three horns blow is you're in the crypts, you have John there who's actually Aegon now, we know he's Aegon Targaryen, um, and he's in there, Danny comes up and he tells her, and the reaction is one that's almost a little bit angry. He tells her and she's like, you know, okay, well you're finding this out from your brother and your best friend and doesn't that give you a great claim to the throne? And so there's immediate tension there. And like I said, it seems like almost anger. And uh, they don't really get the chance to hash it out because the horns blow 
and they have to walk out and now they're starting the battle with the Night King and the dead. So it was really cool, man. There were a lot of really good moments in this episode. And it's funny because so far in two episodes out of six, no one's died yet. But now you know that a lot of people are going to die because they're about to fight the army of the dead. And it's not just going to be somebody that dies. It's going to be more than one. And it's going to be some big characters in this show. They are not going to put forth the army of the dead and not kill off some major characters. Just not going to happen. Uh, so episode three is going to be huge. It's going to be fucking huge. Um, I was really excited a couple of times during this just because the setup was so good. And, um, you know, I've got to say, they perfected this. Like, when they create moments in this series, it's something you genuinely feel. And I think that's one of the things we've all loved about Game of Thrones. You know, honestly, season seven, you didn't have that many big deaths. You had Littlefinger, that was cool. But you really didn't have the shock and awe that you had in so many of the other seasons, you know. Uh, Joffrey, the Red Wedding, Cersei blowing up the church. Um, it's been a little bit tamer for the last season and what is the third now. But you know that's about to change next week. Next week is going to be huge. And I guarantee you this is exactly what I'm going to do next week. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do my initial thoughts. And then I'll do a full review. Uh, so my initial thoughts were this was an amazing episode. It really was. Uh, without, you know, the shock value, the deaths and everything going crazy, it was some just amazing setup, some very well acted scenes. Um, it, it's really gearing you up for what's about to come because you know episode three is going to be some shit. So very excited. That's my initial thoughts. I'll do the actual review here in a few minutes, but I wanted to get this in because I thought it was important to have something very fast to talk about. So ladies and gentlemen, that's where I'm at. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share, help a brother out. Of course, let me know what you think in the comments. My name is Kevin Jackwitz, Cage Nation, out.